If I had to give a number one question from anybody any year, it would be, what are the trends? What's trending right now? What should I buy this year? What isn't cool anymore? I love this question. It is all about the Scandinavian. And yes, I am half Viking. Scandinavian design really lives by the motto that less is more. Everything in your space is there for a reason and it should matter. Let's talk about color. What does it mean when we say Scandinavian palette? Well, they do black and they do white better than anybody. Why? Because most of the year, the land is covered with white. And so they pop up little exteriors of their houses in the contrasting black. They do it in very severe, beautiful ways. They do it in the interiors as well. I even did it in my own living room. So how do I paint a room black and not be scared? Well, you just have to create balance like you would with any color. Bring in a lighter colored floor. Bring in a lighter colored area rug. Bring in neutral sofas and chairs to balance out the earthiness and weight of black. But I promise you, that room will be everyone's favorite. When it comes to Scandinavian design, they do not mess with beige. It is all gray. Think of driftwood, think of docks. Docks in water, in lakes, this is the kind of gray that goes beautifully with Scandinavian design and you see all over the place in major furniture stores, from dining tables to flooring. I used it on my floors and I think it's my favorite piece of my whole house. Beyond the black and white, the real Scandinavian design story is told through texture. Leathers, metals, tassels, rope, all of these things work together. So how do these textures weave their way throughout my home? I mean, they're literally everywhere. And you see that in my living room with this saddle nut leather sofa and matched it with a beautiful, very natural linen sofa paired with maybe a 1920s metal industrial fan. And then you bring in the brass so you have the mixed metal story. There's a big portrait of my great-grandmother's ship coming into New York Harbor as she immigrated. She's not from Scandinavia, she's actually from Croatia. But the ship, the power of that ship, is also really cohesive with the Scandinavian style. I have a lot of rope-like textures to keep telling the Scandinavian story. Nets, knots, turns into macrame rope wrap pots, cylinders, use them as hanging sculptures. They're just a beautiful ornament anywhere. And yes, it's a very masculine story, but it's softened by feminine patterns, tassels and fringe and little embellishments throughout the space. Nature is Scandinavian design. Bringing in those rustic, natural wood tones and textures into your house may seem like it's up from every country, but it really is prominent in the Scandinavian style. They worship at the altar of nature, and so having living things all over your home is crucial to kind of uphold that style. I do it through ferns, I do it through dried roots, I do it through rustic woods. So I took a huge root it's actually a bitter root and hung it on my wall at the top of my stairs. It's pretty dramatic. Now, while I'm at it, what other things should we just kind of push to the side? Granite. Granite is one of those things that we've overused to death as well. I love stone. I love all stone. I just don't want to see any more granite countertops for a while because when we did it, we did it too much and now I don't want granite at the party. The chevron, a timeless ancient pattern, yet we did it so hard, we need a break. Put your chevron in the closet for a while or let it be a layering piece underneath something else. 
So when you're working with Scandinavian design, make everything count. Make it elegant and make it purposeful. And you don't have to be Scandinavian to live Scandinavian.